Do you want to know the top 20 tax deductions for home-based businesses? Then stick around till the end of today's conversation. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Studio Kiwi Show. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you were to ask me. And if you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. Today, I want to have a conversation about um, the top 20 tax deductions for home-based businesses. If you happen to work from home, there are a lot of ways you can make money, actually, by lowering your tax return. And I'm going to show you about by lowering your tax bill. And I'm going to show you today. Let's first talk about number one, self-employment tax. The thing, the, the self-employment tax refers to the Medicare and Social Security taxes that self-employed people must pay. And this includes, when I'm talking about self-employed, I'm talking about freelancers, independent contractors, small business owners, and members of the gig economy. The self-employment tax rate is 15.3%, which actually consists of 12.4% uh, for social, social Security, and 2.9% for Medicare. So employers and employees share the self-employment tax. So each pays 765%, 7.65%. People that are fully self-employed pay the total themselves. And uh, on top of that, you have uh, an extra 0.9 Medicare tax, tax rate that applies if income is above a certain threshold amount. So the threshold figures are 250,000 if married filing jointly. 125,000 if married is filing separate, 200,000 if a single, if you're head of household with a qualifying person, the, the threshold is 200,000, and if you're a qualifying widower with depending uh, depending child, the amount is 200,000. So the income threshold for additional Medicare tax applied not just to uh, self-employment income, but to your combined wages here. So you have to think about your combined wages, your compensation, and self-employment income. Let's talk about home office. So the home office deduction, that's number two. Number two, so number one is self-employment tax. Number two, home office. The home office uh, deduction is one of the more complex deductions. So in short, the, what it is is that the cost of any workspace that you use regularly and exclusively for your business, regardless of whether you rent or own it, can be deducted as a home office expense. The thing here is that the IRS is very, very strict when it comes to enforcing the requirements for home office deduction. So you are basically on the honor system, but you gotta be prepared though, folks, to defend your deduction in the event of an IRS audit. Because one way to do this is to prepare a diagram of your workspace with accurate measurement in case you are required to submit this information to substantiate your deduction which uses the square footage or of your workspace in its calculation, right? So there, there are a lot of, there are a lot of, um, so the home office, you can, uh, once you have that uh, calculation, you can deduct everything from uh, mortgage interest, home depreciation, utilities, homeowners insurance, and repairs that you pay during the year. And uh, it, so for, for example, if your home office occupies a 15% of your home, for example, then 15% of your annual electricity bill becomes tax deductible. And when it comes to home office space, you also have to think about things like homeowners insurance, um, HOA fees, janitorial services, mortgage insurance, mortgage interest, repairs and maintenance, and of course, as I said earlier, utilities. So that will be uh, electricity, internet, heat, and hot water. Number three, the top one of the top tax deductions for a home-based business is internet and phone bills very important so regardless of whether you claim the home office deduction you can deduct the business portion of your phone fax and internet expenses so the key here is to deduct only the expenses directly related to your business as i was telling you earlier it's very important because the irs might audit you you want to be prepared so for example you could deduct the internet related cost of running a website for your business number five health insurance premiums number six meals Number seven, professional services. So for professional services, I'm just talking about everything from accounting fees, 
consultant fees, legal fees, and subcontractors. Now, for subcontractors like consultants, the the fees you pay for any the, the fees you pay to any subcontractors are also deductible under your cost of service or cost of goods sold. So when filing your business taxes, you gotta remember to send both the individual subcontractors and the IRS a form 1099 to, uh, to for each subcontractor paid more than $600 in a given year. So if you pay someone more than $600 during a, give, during a given tax year, you gotta send that person at the end, come January 31st or January uh, 15 of the following year you gotta send that you gotta send each person you paid more than six hundred dollars a form 1099 and you gotta send uh, the similar form to the irs i want to quickly come back to the health insurance premium because that's very important and uh, if you are self-employed pay for your own health insurance premiums and are not eligible to participate in a plan through your spouse's employer you can deduct all of your health dental and qualified long-term care insurance premiums you can also deduct premiums that you paid to provide coverage for your spouse, your dependent, and your children who were younger than 27 at year end, even if they are not dependent on your taxes. So you can uh, calculate the deduction using the self-employed health insurance deduction worksheet in IRS publication 535. So this is if you have, if you want more info about the calculation, you want to go to IRS publication 535. And this is kind of important because um, more and more Americans are now actually resorting to um, self-employment so they're working from home so it, and so they are they are forced if you will they are looking for ways to buy their own health insurance health insurance so this is a deduction you really certainly want to pay attention to next is travel travel is a very important also this is if you have a home a home-based business travel is very important to so qualify as a tax deduction though Business travel must be must lack must last longer than an ordinary work day, work day rather, require you to get sleep or rest and take place away from the general area of your tax home. So usually it has to be uh, outside the city where your business is located. And in terms of uh, travel, let's just uh, go a little deeper here because uh, for the in terms of travel deductions. And I'm spending some time here because the IRS in the last few years has been auditing like crazy. They've been auditing like um, crazy taxpayers who have been claiming bogus travel deductions. So travel deductions, whether it is to attend a conference or visit a friend, you can write off many of the costs associated with traveling for business. Now, remember, traveling for work does not mean it has to be boring, right? If you have a reason to travel for business at a fun or family friendly location, there is nothing wrong with that, and there's nothing wrong with the whole folding in a little fun along the way. So airline tickets would definitely qualify. Hotels and lodging, meals while traveling, and rental cars. So that's for the travel. And number eight, marketing and business development. You can also write off um, everything rela related to business development and marketing. Here I'm talking about advertising costs, so advertising can be everywhere, though not just uh, traditional uh, print and uh, you know print media. It can be Facebook ads, it can be online advertising. So it can be uh, Google ads, uh, Facebook ads, Bing ads, and so on and so forth. If you advertise, for example, uh, so the advertising cost. If you advertise the, in uh, the local uh, newspaper, in the uh, on local TV, all of that will qualify. Conventions and trade shows. So if you, um, this is sort of falls into the, the broader category of educational expenses. Here I'm talking about workshops, networking events. Those costs that are associated with attending events and conventions and trade shows can actually be deducted as long as the agenda for the convention is related, to, is related rather to your business or role within, within the company. So that's kind of important, folks. So you have to be very careful about that. So it is important to know that Conventions held outside of North America are generally not deductible. You can also write off entertainment for customers and, and clients, so money that you paid for that. That's something that's very, you can write it off. And um, what uh, the, the IRS has uh, two tests here, two methods for actually evaluating the validity of uh, those um, entertainment expenses. They have something called the, the directly related test and the associated test. So things like hunting trips or cruises typically do not meet this criteria, these two tests. 
So you want to check with your accountant, your CPA or your EA about specific scenarios to determine what you can and cannot write off in this category. Also gifts to customers also will uh, qualify in the under the great uh, the, the broad umbrella of uh, marketing and business development. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another um, section of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation about um, the top 20 tax deductions for a home-based business. And uh, number nine, vehicle use. If you use your vehicle um, for your business, your expenses for those drives are tax deductible. Just make sure to keep excellent records for, for the dates, I mean, about the dates, mileage, and purpose for each trip. And don't try to claim personal car trips as business car trips. You can calculate your deduction using uh, either what the IRS calls the standard mileage rate, and this is determined annually by the IRS. And it's actually uh, it's uh, it was um, 57.5 cents per mile in 2020. So you can use the standard mileage rate or your actual expenses. And one thing we've seen in our in our experience is that. Uh, the standard mileage rate is the easiest because it requires minimal record keeping and calculation. So you just wanted to write down the business miles that you drive and the dates you, you drive them. And then you want, you want to multiply your total annual business miles by the standard mileage rate. This amount is your deductible expense. And you also have, uh, besides vehicle use, you have vehicle and transportation expenses. So auto cost, mileage, parking, and tolls. Number 10, interest. Interest is also something you can, uh, it's, and this is this has to be interest on a business loan from a bank, and that has that's, that is a, a tax deductible business expense. So let's say if a loan is used for both business and personal purposes, the business portion of the loan's interest expense is allocated based on the allocation of the loan's proceeds. So you will need it to track the disbursement of funds from various for various uses if the entire loan is not used for business related activities so credit card interest is not tax deductible when you incur the interest for personal purchases but when the interest applies um, to business purchases it is indeed tax deductible number uh, number 11 publications and subscriptions so this also if you have uh, the cost of specialized magazines I'm talking about journals and, and books directly related to your business is tax deductible so a daily newspaper, for example, would not be specific enough to be considered a business expense. But uh, if you, let's say, if you are in the accounting in the accounting uh, industry and you subscribe to the magazine of the AICPA, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, that will be tax deductible. Now let's talk about number um, number twelve, education. Now education, any education expense you want to deduct must be related to maintaining or improving your skills for your existing business. So the cost of classes to prepare um, for a new line of work is not deductible. So let's say if you are a real estate consultant taking a course called the real estate investment analysis to brush up on your skills will be tax deductible, but a class on how to teach yoga will not be. Right. So the thing here is that as long as you can show the IRS and state tax authorities that the training is necessary for improving or maintaining skills needed for your business, you can deduct the cost of education and training for either yourself or your employees. Number 13, business insurance. So if you pay premiums for any type of insurance to protect your business, here I'm talking about credit insurance, fire insurance, car insurance on a business vehicle or business liability insurance, all of those you can you can indeed deduct your premiums. So some people don't like paying insurance premiums because they perceive them as a waste of money if they never have to file a claim, right? But the business insurance tax deduction can help ease that, that hatred. Number 14, finance deductions. So here, so everything from, now the thing here is when you operate a small business, you can have a lot of finance related cost. And I'm not talking about interest here, interest on a loan. So the great thing here, the great news is you can deduct fees and expenses that you that your home business racks up that you will not be able to deduct as an individual. So when filing your return, make sure to account for the, the following finance 
related tax deductions. So you have bad debts, banking fees, credit card fees here I'm talking about. I'm not talking about those uh, the uh, foreign transaction fee or um, or uh, APR or annual fee or uh, late fees. And I'm talking about the credit card processing fees. Because if your business charges customers through credit card processing, you know that those transactional fees can add up to, steep, to, to a steep cut into your sales profit, right? So the 3% that, that Amex or 3% that the MasterCard or 3% that the Visa takes from your, from your sales, you can deduct those. Collection expenses. So if you have to go after a client who's not paying you, you can actually deduct that. Number 15, rent. So if you rent out of an office space, you can deduct the amount you pay for rent. And uh, you can also deduct points. Uh, you can also deduct amounts paid to paid for the equipment you rent. And if you have to pay a fee to cancel a business lease, that expense is also deductible. Number sixteen. You can actually also de deduct the uh, the startup cost. So there are a lot of uh, costs that are associated with uh, startups and um, the, the IRS usually requires you to deduct major expenses over time as capital expenses rather than all at once. That's called amortization. And uh, however, you can deduct up to $5,000 in business startup costs in the first year of active trade or business. So example of tax deductible startup costs include market research and travel re related uh, travel related costs to starting your business, scoping out potential business locations, advertising, attorney fees, and accounting fees. Number 17, you have uh, office expenses. And so from paper to, uh, to postage and pains and shipping costs, small daily office expenses can add up to a major tax deduction at the end of the year. So just make sure you hang on to those, uh, all of those uh, office supply receipts for tax time. So when I'm talking about office expense, you have uh, everything from office, office supplies, postage, and even newspaper and magazine subscriptions. So those will qualify too. Number 18, advertising. So this, this will be online advertising. So if you pay for Facebook ads, Google ads, a website, a billboard, a TV commercial, or mailed, mailed flyers, those will qualify as well. Number uh, 19, retirement plan contribution. And this is kind of this is this is a very cool one. So one deduction you can take going into business for yourself that that is especially worthwhile is the deduction for self-employed retirement plan, your SERP. So contribution to SEP IRAs, simple IRAs, and so, and solo 401ks reduce your tax bill now and help you rack up tax deferred investment plans for later. So for for the 2020 uh, and 2021 tax year. For example, you could easily contribute as much as $19,500 in deferred salary or $26,000 with a $6,500 catch-up contribution if you are 50 or older. And, and what, what's really good also is that you can contribute another 25% of your net self-employment earnings after deducting one half of self-employment tax and contribution for yourself. And the, uh, the total maximum contribution cannot exceed 57,000 for 2020 and 58,000 for 2021. And the last thing, the last, uh, the d d d deduction number 20, the last deduction here, last but not the least, is the uh, cost of goods sold. So if your business manufactures products or purchases them for resale, you can include some of your expenses to calculate the cost of goods sold. So that's, this is very important. This is very good. So, uh, any, so anything, anything from storage, factory overhead, direct labor, and the cost of your products or raw materials, including the freight, can qualify for a cost of goods sold. All right, folks, so you've had all the 20, um, the 20, the top 20 tax deductions for home-based businesses. The bottom line here is that most small business tax deductions are more complicated than this uh, short video describes because in the tax code things are more complicated but at least you have an idea it is a great introduction to the basics there are more deductions available than those that i've spoken to uh, spoken about but there are some of the, the one that i'm talking that i've talked about in today's show or the biggest ones office supplies credit card processing fees tax preparation fees and repairs and maintenance for business property and equipment are also deductible still 
other business expenses can be depreciated or amortized, meaning that you can deduct a small amount of the cost each year over several years. Remember though, folks, and this is very important, anytime you're not sure whether a cost is a legitimate business expense, ask yourself, is this an ordinary and necessary expense in my line of work? Because this is the same question that the IRS will ask when examining your deduction, your deductions if you are audited. So anytime the answer is no, do not take the, the, the uh, deduction. And if you're not sure, seek professional help with your business tax return from a certified public accountant or an enrolled agent or even a fiscal attorney before making any decision. All right, here's a recap here. I've, I've spoken to you about 20 tax deductions, the top 20 tax deductions for a home-based business. Here they are. Here's a recap. Self-employment tax, home office, internet and phone bills, health insurance premiums, meals, professional services, travel, marketing and business development, vehicle use, interest, publications and subscriptions, education, business insurance, finance deductions, rent, startup costs, office expenses, advertising, retirement plan contributions, cost of goods sold. I will see you next time. Thank you so much, folks. Until next time, remember to stay marvelous. <laughs>